Ladies and gentlemen, Silent Mike, welcome back to another edition of Fix Your Form. We're talking squats today. If you want to get involved, I need three reps at 70%, preferably from the side and from the front. Email to ask, M I K K E, at gmail.com. And if you appreciate this, if you've learned something, be sure to subscribe and give the video a thumbs up right now. Let's see if we can get to 2,000 likes. My man right here from the first rep, I could already tell uh, that stance just looks a hair wide for you and the weight looks a hair heavier than 70%. Uh, overall, the form is pretty dang decent. Now what we're talking about here with the lower bar position on the back, you will get some lean in the squat. Um, I don't think overall that's going to be a big issue, but what we don't want is that angle, the hip torso angle to get drastically worse as we come up. And where you can see there, your hips shoot up a little bit early. So what we need to focus on is really flexing those quads sometimes some occasion that is the tightness in your stomach and lats sometimes I believe it's actually even um, quad weakness where hamstrings and low back are trying to take over so I'd suggest moving that stance in a hair making sure you're flexing your stomach real hard get your timing and tempo down so when you hit that hole you're really pressing into the bar with your back so we get our knees and our hips locking out at the same time the same motion overall pretty dang decent my friend <laughs> Moving on to the next one. What do we got, ladies and gents? Oh, he looks tired. Look back at us, looking sad, looking angry. I like the garage gym setup. He's got the headphones in. Comment below, ladies and gentlemen, what you think my man here in the yellow is listening to. I need an artist and a song, which you think this fine gentleman is jamming through the ears. I got, I got Hit Me Baby One More Time, Britney Spears as he's just warming up with his 70%. It's not a big deal for him, so he's just listening to that. He's got the Brazil shirt on. He's multicultural. He likes Brazil. He likes Brittany, etc. Decent little walkout. Looks tight. Let's see what we got. Overall, the form looks really good. Uh, we talk about it a lot in many instances, uh, in the squat in particular, and the bench a bit. Uh, tempo. Pacing and tempo. Now, you do... Uh, often lift more weight when you're moving quickly. Uh, often when you move down, uh, you get some rebound out of the hole, you get some of that elasticity out of your muscles, uh, and you can fire a little bit better. Plus, you're not being under load as long. So I do like a quicker uh, eccentric and, uh, uh, on the squat and the deadlift. But the issue is, is you want to be quick, but don't hurry. Uh, if you guys are sick of me saying that, uh, then fix all your lifts and I'll stop saying it. But you want to be quick, but don't hurry. You want to be quick enough and fast enough, but still maintain tightness. You want to move as quickly as you can while staying in the groove and while staying tight. Uh, and my man right here looks like he's just moving a little bit too quick for your britches. Uh, I'd like to see you slow down that squat. I almost think about my feet being in bindings, um, almost like a, a spin bike or even a snowboard. And I'm pulling myself down to the ground, like my shoes and my feet are stapled to the ground. And I'm pulling myself into the ground, knees forward, knees out, uh, maintaining that tightness not only in my legs but my, my stomach rigidity, and then firing back up. Uh, overall, really decent form, but I'd make sure that you're staying tight. Uh, here we go. we got a side form. You might be able to sit a little bit better. Uh, the, the issue is both the bench and the squat, particularly in the squat, if you descend uh, the eccentric too quickly uh, under heavier and heavier loads, uh, one, you're going to lose tightness and you're going to end up failing in the hole. And in my opinion, you should never fail in the hole. If you're failing in the hole, the attempt was just too heavy. Uh, most people obviously fail uh, kind of mid-range, a little bit out of the hole. Uh, number two, what will happen is often uh, your weight will shift on your feet either on the toes or your heels, and that's going to cause an issue, and your hips will drive up too early, uh, keeping that barbell in front of you. You're going to lose balance. You're going to have to good morning the weight up, uh, which above 90% just will not happen. So uh, with this load, he's smashing it because it actually looks like it's about 70% or even lower than his one rep max. So you can kind of do it however you'd like. Um, and you're going to end up having some type of success. Uh, from this angle also, it looks like you're a little bit too much into your knees uh, where it's making depth a little bit difficult. So focus on pushing those hips back just a little bit and knees out a little bit more uh, as well as controlling that squat. So then when you get into the 80, 85, 90% range, uh, you'll be able to maintain that squat both ways. Uh, on basically uh, all lifts, minus the bench press a little bit, uh, you should be able to play your squat forward and reverse and it look very, very similar in the deadlift and the squat. And the bench press is going to be a little bit different because our eccentric, our descend, the way down to our chest uh, is going to be a straight line uh, or fairly straight where our press up optimally is going to be a little bit of a squiggle, if not uh, a big squiggle and an arc 
uh, back up towards our neck, towards our eye line, towards the rack. But the squat should be straight up and down. Um, and as I mentioned here, if you start moving a little bit too quickly and losing that tightness, you're kind of falling down. Uh, it's going to be really difficult to maintain that on the way up. Uh, again, right there, you can see this angle is a little bit better. It looks like you're a hair high in the squat, my friend. Uh, so some pause squats, finding depth. Uh, having a, a video there or a training partner tell you when you hit depth, hanging out there for about three seconds and reinforcing those knees out. We got another squat here. Oh, this guy's got a little uh, stumpy legs. No offense, my friend. That's actually a great squatting compliment in the squat world uh, that you have small little femurs from your knees to your hips. So you're going to hit depth pretty efficiently. Um, from this angle, it does look like you're a hair high overall. Overall, you are very efficient. Um, I am a little bit biased, but what I do think, uh, maybe that squat rack's a little skinny or maybe you're tall as shit and I'm wrong. Uh, but if you move your feet in just a bit, uh, you'll be able to push into those knees get a little bit more rebound, a little bit more contact between your hams and your calves, um, and also hit proper depth. Uh, hopefully we get a side angle from you, my man. Here we go. And we'll see where that depth is. It just looks a hair high to me. Uh, and, and regardless of your powerlifting or not, um, yeah, it is a hair high. What we want to do is always change the change. <coughs> excuse me. Uh, bring that back, DJ. Oh, uh, We want to train our muscles in the longest range of motion as we can um, that's going to allow us to build the most amount of muscle and the more muscle we build over time the stronger and more jacked and beautiful as humans we will be so uh, move that stance in uh, keep pushing into those knees a little bit uh, I think just moving the stance in alone will allow your hips uh, a little bit more proper depth and it might feel a little bit smoother. It might feel a little bit weird uh, as all these cues, any coaching cue, especially in powerlifting, uh, among other sports, but of, 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 in powerlifting, any cue you get or doing it properly won't magically add 50 or 100 pounds to your PR. Uh, what it will do is allow you to train uh, more volume, uh, injury-free, and more efficiently over time so that, you know, four, six, uh, eight weeks from now, you'll be hitting PRs or feeling smoother and more efficient. So take any cue I give you, give it a good four to six weeks, doing it best you can from what I have explained, and then make a judgment call. Say, yeah, I think that, uh, that silent mic guy had something right. I do feel better doing this. I'm going to stick with it. Or, nah, I liked it better the other way. And by all means, if you're not getting injured or you're not hurting anyone else, you can do whatever the hell you want to do. I don't really care. We got my man in a monolift, it looks like. Serious power lifting. A little higher bar position, which is absolutely fine. We're not going to get into details of, of being more upright or a, low, a lower bar position. Uh, that second one looked pretty good. When I talked about pacing and being a little bit more aggressive, and that last one looked a hair sloppy. So you see the first one, he was a little hesitant getting into the hole. The second, I think, was just right. Kind of like the three uh, Red Riding Hood and the three little bears or whatever the story goes. And the last one was rushed just a little bit. And that's kind of the um, practice of powerlifting. You know, doing singles, doubles, triples allows us to practice that perfect repetition over and over so we can get not only the strength and practice of walkout and racking the bar, uh, but the pace itself. Uh, that second one's gold. And then this last one, uh, it looks like you just rush a hair. So then you get pitched forward just a little bit. I'm digging the kicks, my man. He's rocking the Reebok. Overall, really, really good. You also uh, make pretty good efficiency of your leverages, if I do say so myself. Um, I think long term, you may be a little bit more comfortable and lift a little more weight with a slightly lower bar position. Uh, but overall, if you prefer squatting this way, I think it looks really, really good. You'll build up a nice squat um, and some nice quads that way. Keep forcing those knees out. Keep forcing that middle down. Uh, the one thing is I can't tell from this view, but the tighter, the tighter you can get your lats and the tighter you can get your upper back, uh, the stronger you're going to feel, the more uh, efficiency and transfer of power you'll be able to press those legs and into the bar. So overall, really, really solid. Here's that front view I was looking for. Really, really good. Really, really good. I got nothing to say. Uh, breathing, everything looks pretty dang solid. Uh, legs, knees are tracking great. Um, but again, if you can get that upper back as tight as humanly possible, uh, you'll be nice and rigid from your hip to your shoulder, and you'll be able to really push into that barbell. Great work. Oh, and we got the slow-mo remix. Everyone, I do appreciate you guys for tuning in. Everyone says these love these series, but sometimes it doesn't always get the views and love that I believe it deserves. So be sure to share this out with your friends, subscribe, turn on the notifications, give this thing a thumbs up. Let's see if we can hit 2K likes. If we hit 2K likes, this video may uh, get some love on the YouTube world. Ladies and gentlemen, the last one of the day, my man going beltless, a little bit lower bar position. Let's see what he's got. Efficient walkout, I like it. And descend. Pretty dang solid, pretty dang solid. What I would say is in that lower bar position, um, you're going to probably need a hair more 
uh, torso lean to it. Although you're, uh, again, and I mean this in the, the fondest way ever, you are a little stumpy from your knees to your hips, so you can hit depth, uh, what looks very efficiently, um, but you have a little bit of torso lean right there. What I would say for you, my friend, is just force those hips back just a bit, uh, not only uh, on, uh, on the start and, and the walkout, make sure you're standing tall. Um, being too uh, flaccid, if you will, in your knees and hips on a walkout uh, can just add some unnecessary stress. So we want to be as stacked as possible. Back looks nice and tight. Breathing looks nice and tight. Um, but make sure those quads and hips are slightly locked, not only on the walkout, uh, but then the, the first descent. I want you to lead with your hips just a hair more. Um, again, I don't want to get in the conversation of leading with hips or knees. I do think you should kind of lead with both. Uh, overall, you don't have to change a thing, but I do think if you push your hips back just a hair more, uh, you might get a little bit of power into that low back glutes and hams. And of course, if we're lifting weights, we want to use the most amount of weight and musculature possible uh, to lift the most amount of weight possible. Again, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for all of the support. Happy holidays to you. We're dropping a video all through the holidays every other day. That new fat loss series is dropped, so be sure to check out episode one, the video before this. Appreciate you guys. Salam Mike. Head down, chin up. I'm out of here.